Capitol Television's Dave Barber coming to you from the third floor of the Rhode Island State House in a segment we call Capitol Spotlight. We take five minutes and talk to a member of the General Assembly and discuss some of the things they've been working on and how it might impact you, the Rhode Island citizen. It's a pleasure indeed to welcome back a good friend to Capitol Television from the Rhode Island House of Representatives, the Honorable Representative Mia Ackerman. Representative, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for inviting me back. And I particularly like your American flag pen. Thank you. It's very, it's it with a lot of pride. Well, as we all uh, should. Uh, you've been very busy. You've been working on some legislation to increase transparency regarding notification and minutes of fire district meetings in your district. Tell us about that and why is it important? Right. Well, we there are over 40 independent fire districts in the state of Rhode Island. They are their own governing body, their own taxing authority, yet the taxpayers are not able to get information on decisions that are being made on their behalf. So this bill will require the fire districts to post draft minutes of their meetings 21 days after having their meeting so people can know what things are being done on their behalf and they can be well prepared. Now, now has there been a problem, obviously, with this in the past? Has, has, have they been slow in getting them out and uh, maybe dragging their feet? Right. Well, the situation is you can't seem to get a copy of minutes. Agendas are posted on the Secretary of State's website, but minutes are nowhere to be found. Uh, it can take weeks sometimes to get a copy from the actual fire district. Time is very sensitive. There are decisions that are being made constantly. I know in my own district there's been many occasions where people didn't know some major decisions were being made until it was too late. Wouldn't you think in today's high-tech world of computer technology, once the minutes of a meeting have been approved, that you can just simply click on a PDF file and upload it to your website and it's done in like 2.3 seconds? I agree. It, it is that easy. But um, school committees, town councils, you're able to get that information almost immediately. But the fire districts, again, because they are taxing authorities. They have the ability to tax you, but you can't be part of that process. Um, so I think this is one step in the right direction to create a transparency so everyone knows what's going on. Uh, now, I, I know, too, uh, in recent months we've talked a great deal, in fact, over the last year or so, about the school funding formula. And uh, by most accounts, people have said it was really a step in the right direction, that it's a more fair way to disperse the money to the various um, school committees around the state. You have some legislation that uh, you believe will help your particular area of Cumberland and Lincoln with this uh, school funding formula. Tell us about that. Actually, it doesn't just help my community. It will help 75 to 80 percent of the communities around the state that have been shortchanged for many, many years. What this bill proposes to do is to accelerate it so that the amount that we're due through the slow acceleration process will happen this year. So, in other words, Cumberland and Lincoln will see um, three to four million dollars in each of those communities. Um, as opposed to having to wait till the full acceleration. That's money we desperately need in our school system. Um, but what community are you from, Dave? I, I live in Pawtucket. Pawtucket's a great example. Pawtucket would see an infusion of $12 million this year, which I know they desperately need in their schools to upgrade, to do any number of things. But what this, the one aspect of this bill that I really like is the fact that if the community has reached its per-pupil spending, it, it also provides for municipal relief. So if you've already reached that level, you will then be able to use the extra tax dollars for your municipal, whether it's for infrastructure, whether it's to give your taxpayers a break. So there's a lot of goodness in this. We're getting the money that we need for our infrastructure, for our schools, and yet we're providing tax relief to the residents. What, what, what do you think the chances are, though, of those school committees getting to that uh, per a pupil amount and having money left over? Well, in Cumberland, it probably won't happen, but in Lincoln it will happen. When they've accelerated to the maximum, they will have money left over, and they would like to use, be able to use that money to give property relief, tax relief, to their residents. Well, listen, Representative Ackerman, uh, you're always most gracious in talking with us. You've been extremely busy, and uh, we thank you so much for taking time out of your day right before session to visit with us on Capitol Spotlight. My best to you and your colleagues thank in the you House. Thank you so much for inviting me, Dave. It's always a pleasure. And, of course, thank you for tuning in. My name is Dave Barber, a segment we call Capitol Spotlight.